Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm James Milan. I am talking one on one with Janice Weber, the current acting clerk who is also up for election as town clerk. Um, Janice, thanks for joining us, especially given the fact that you, uh, as much as anybody in this town, have had to have been going crazy now for the last <laughs> while. So, well, I think Christine Buongiorno is going crazier than I am. She has a lot more on her plate. And I'm the assistant town clerk, not the acting. Sorry, assistant. That's okay. Thank you for that correct. No, appreciate that correction. Um, anyway, it's a big, big job that you have at the moment and, um, and one that you're also interested in taking on. So one of the first things I wanted to ask you about is um, both of the other candidates in the race have made, I think, quite a bit of the idea that change needs to be brought to the town clerk's office. And they have their ideas for what that constitutes and how to do it, et cetera. I'm wondering, how do you feel about that from as somebody who's working in the office and has for a while, do you feel that changes are required? Yes, absolutely. I've felt that way for quite a few years. Um, we need more technology, but not a lot can be technology. A lot of it has to be in person kind of things and like that, but we can run on the way we are, but we definitely need more technology in the office. And I've been saying that for quite a while, but I have no um, way to enforce that until. Um, yeah, what, is, what are the obstacles there? Is it a question of money? Um, no, well, it is money, of course, but um, especially now we'll probably be going through it all. Um, the thing is, we, we need to get connections for uh, online access to things. But talking to the treasurer's office and to other offices, that has to go through them. We can't just initiate that we can have a credit card in our office. It's not really up to us. And it has to be beneficial to both the town and the customers. So right now, the treasurer's office, they have to pay a 2.5% fee if they just use their credit card. So it's not like a 25-cent fee. The only way it's a 25-cent fee is if they go through their checking account. And I've checked several times with the treasurers about this because I wasn't sure I got it straight, but that's definitely what it is. You're saying that, that, that people, if people go through their checking accounts, then they just have to pay a 25% fee for I, that transaction. No, a 25 cent fee. I'm mean, sorry, 25 yeah. cent. Thank you. I believe whatever, it's a small fee, but, um, mm -hmm. but if they go through their credit card company, I mean, people that are paying exorbitant tax bills, they have paid up to $90 in a fee. And, and I just got a letter from a lady the other day, actually. It happened to come on my email. I don't know why, but um, she said the very same thing. She was paying a $290 bill or something like that. I don't have the exact figure. And it was going to cost her $9.90. She didn't have any idea of that when she was going into the um, the computer. So I like, like need to get that straightened out. Yeah, sounds like part of the problem in terms of moving forward with some technological advances or changes is just that it it may cost uh, the te you know the act the the people who are actually availing themselves of the services the public. Exactly. Um, what about uh, the idea that like ha how hard would it be to uh, one of the things that that uh, both Julie Brazil and Patty Sautel have been talking about is transferring the existing paper records and content over into electric formats that are you know, electronic formats easier to manipulate and work with well um, we have we have done that we've we have um the marriage some of the marriages we have the deaths and the births are all electronic now the older ones aren't but that of course is a, an exorbitant cost but that would be nice to have it done we do have um a program for the old records that we have to actually type up a form for. Once it's typed up, it goes into the queue and stays in there. So if you have to look for it again, you just have to search by the name or the um, birth date or the death date. The marriages aren't quite the same, but we're getting there with those. So it's really, you know, the books go back to the 1800s, some 1600s. So as I said, it would be, we would have to have an agency do that. We couldn't do that ourselves unless it's my retirement job, then I could do it. <laughs> um, well, obviously, I mean, the, the things that people are most concerned about is how to streamline the processes that are most relevant for now, of course. Well, they're pretty fast now. I mean, when, I, when someone calls me for a birth certificate, I'm, I just ask their name and their birth date, and I'm right there with the computer, and I can look it up to make sure it's here and then have it ready, and they come in and they get it. That's what they've been doing all along anyway. Mm -hmm. If they're far away, we have to mail it, obviously, but... Yeah, it's pretty fast. 
And technology obviously is just one piece of, of what you do or one component that could help you to do that work even mm -hmm. better. Um, the biggest thing, I, as far as I can tell, is my own interaction as a resident of Arlington with the town clerk's office must be reflected in everybody else's, uh, by which I mean, sometimes I need something, I'm gonna go in there, you're gonna, I'm gonna interface with the people who are there and see you know, how quickly and efficiently I can get done what I need done. Mm -hmm. And that's my experience, right? And again, that's, I assume, how everybody else in town is dealing with the clerk's office a lot of the time. On that level, how do you feel like things are functioning currently? And are there any changes that you would feel in terms of the way that you guys interact with the public that, that you would like to see, you know, changes you'd like to see made? Well, um, right now, all we do is if they call up and they need something, they're coming down to get it. We have it ready the minute they get there, so there's no waiting. But it's kind of nice to talk to people, and a lot of times, especially the older people like myself, we talk about the old Arlington and who you know and who you don't know and, you know, can make connections. And there are people from out of town who know people in Arlington and came here when they were youngsters and that kind of thing. It's nice to have that personal interaction. But we try to do we definitely do it as fast as we can i mean if they can't send a check or they need it right away we just send it out to them and with a fee due and everybody sends their money back i mean nobody tries to get away with it so hmm. you know it's pretty fast i haven't seen you in there jim <laughs> in office. have you been um, I, I you know i actually have been in there at, di at different times in the last uh, couple of years just to, again to transact a little business and um you know, it's, it's, it's gone fine, I have to say. Um, but one of the things that you ha have hit on in uh, conversations before, including the debate, is this kind of long held, I think, sense that the clerk's office is a place where a lot of work needs to happen and the resources aren't necessarily there for, you know, to support that work. Um, is that your sense? And is there anything that you can imagine how that can change? Yes, um, there's always a room for improvement for everything. And the state computers are, excuse me, they're, they're obviously separate from our computers, but they're not on our desktops. So anytime we have to research there, we have to go over to the computer, the one that's in the um, office on the counter. And you go over and you find out the information of the person, you come back, then they ask you another question about the same thing, and you go back and forth. It's not that it kills me to go back and forth. It's just time-consuming for the person on the phone. So we've been trying to negotiate with the state and with the town because we have more state computers in the back room. They're just all in the back room. We want them on our desks. That would expedite a lot of things for us, and that's, that's a negotiation I have to make. And I've so tried, when, but when you say state computers, just to clarify, make sure I understand, mm -hmm. you mean computers that are connected to the state databases and other. Yes, it's the um, it's the voter registration information system. And it, you can search people, you know, people will call up and say, um, is this person a voter there? Well, you can search to see where they're living now for the person if we have their birth date. So it's quite convenient for a lot of people. It's just um, it would be much more convenient on our desks. Yeah, and what does it take to change that? Well, it's interesting. I went to a conference and one girl said she had a plug, she had an extension to go into the next room to get the computer in that room and it was $2,000 and it was only going through a wall. So, I was in the back room, so I'm, and we, of course, it's an old building and there's a lot of old wiring here and there and you need to be close. The thing is, you need to be close to the router so the town has to do the electrical work. We have to pay for that, but the the um, state will come out and change the things and fix them to where we want them. And we are getting, actually, we're getting new computers where we were supposed to get them now, but because of the, the corona, we're not getting them yet. But mm -hmm. those are free from the state. So that's why I wanted to have, if I could get the electrical um, connections, that when the new ones come in, we could just have them on our desk. We have them there. It's just that they're all in one room except for one. You, you know, you just mentioned the uh, coronavirus and <laughs> amazing that we could have a conversation even for, you know, 10 minutes without it coming up already. But obviously COVID-19 has messed with your work in a big way um, in over the last couple of months as it has for everybody. I'm wondering though, is there anything that has come up because of the of what you've had to do 
um, as a result of the pandemic. Is there anything that has been an innovation that has been something that you'll want to take forward, uh, you know, with you on the other side of this um, as a different way of doing things, a different, you know, different kind of uh, either technology or processes you've used, anything like that? Well, I have done one thing. Um, the business certificates, what I do is I mail, I, I mean, I email the form to the person that wants the business certificate. They fill out the information, send it back to me. I put it on a business certificate for them, send it back to them for any corrections. And if they say it's okay, then I process it and certify it. And then they come downstairs in the parking lot uh, to the door and we transfer that and they give us the check. So that's that's been working fine the only thing i haven't been doing is um, marriage intentions because i'm the i've been the only one in the office now the girls are starting to come in a little bit at a time but i've been the only one in the office and the marriage intentions are a little more um close up because the people have to fill out three forms you have to go over the forms with them and if oh, you're right you know yeah, it's very different right. you exactly make i mean there are towns that do it and i um i always email the people the towns that are doing it to, to get their intention. So they say oh, so, great. somebody doesn't, who lives in Arlington doesn't necessarily have to do that here. Well, I chose not to do it because of the uh, interaction and the time it takes. And you have to run downstairs to do it and run back upstairs to right. do something else, you know, and it's a, it's a longer I'm sorry, process. I just, yeah. I just wasn't, I hadn't been clear on the fact that that wasn't something that Arlington residents needed to do in Arlington. In fact, they can do it at other offices. They can do it anywhere in Massachusetts as long as they're getting married in Massachusetts. So I've been sending them all to Concord. I hope they're not mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Give them something to do out there in Concord. Well, sure I know. They, well, I don't know if they've got a vote, you know, that they've got to get ready for or not, but uh, I think you've got more than enough to do. Um, we, we've got about two minutes left or so uh, mm -hmm. of our time. We don't have to take all of it, but I wanted to make sure that we don't leave anything unmentioned or undiscussed that you wanted to make sure you communicate it to the voters. Well, I just hope they realize that we're doing the best we can um, getting everything out. We have all of our absentee ballots in the mail now that we've had in the um, office and that's about a thousand we did have a problem with the overseas because at first they said we couldn't send them because we only can snail mail the town um, ballot we can't email it as we do for the others overseas so there was a little glitch there and a couple of people which understandably were upset because the children couldn't get the ballots but then i got a list that said that some of the countries could get it and i sent it to like all of the countries whether they could get it or not because maybe they can get it through who knows Mm -hmm. So every, everything's in the mail for that, and the postcards are in the mail now, so people should be getting those shortly to right. send in for an absentee ballot. All oh, right. and there, there are, just so they know, there will be three drop boxes on Long Mass Avenue to put your ballot in when you finish with it, and it, they'll be in the Heights, the Center, and um, East Arlington. Great information for people. Uh, yeah, you know, obviously, we're all doing these, these things for the first time. You know? I know. You know that better than most. It's probably not going to be the last time this year, too, unfortunately. Right. More elections coming up. And right. yeah, you're already having to anticipate that, I would think. Yeah. All right. We wanted to thank you very much for well, your Well, thank time. you for the time. I appreciate it. All of you I stay have... safe. And you. Thank you. Um, I've been speaking to Janice Weber, who is the assistant town clerk and in the running for town clerk for this year of 2020. I'm James Milan. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.